Hey guys, welcome back. I just wanted to do a quick run through, a little demo on Jace Weasel, JS Weasel, whatever you want to call it, uh, Charlie Erickson's tool because we just had a talk with him last video and I said I would put out a demo. So I just want to put out a really quick demo just so people can see kind of what it looks like. Um, there's pictures of it and other people have posted about it on Twitter, but just a really quick walkthrough of setting it up and then kind of what it does with both Portswigger Labs and then uh, BugBountyHunter.com, Zishano's platform. And we'll just kind of show a few examples of that. So there's three things you need to get it set up. There's the Burp Suite portion, there is the Visual Studio portion, and then there's the actual server itself that processes the JavaScript. Let me just turn the camera a little bit here. There we go. So the first one we're gonna need is like I said, you gotta start the server. So I have the newest version downloaded and all you really have to do once you download it is you just start the executable for whatever op operating system you have. There's flags you can put on the end to change your port and change databases and stuff like that. But default, if you run it like that, it'll run on that port and it'll give you a database and stuff like that. So you're good to go there. In burp, you have to download the extension that will come with it. It's just a jar file. So all I do is add right here in Java, select the file and it'll load. And you'll see it right there. It's done. Let me exit, thank you. So you'll see it right there, I already downloaded it. And then you'll see the little pop up over here where you can put in the IP address. So I just have it obviously running local. Uh, and then the port that you're running it on. And then you can save if you change it. And then the last thing you need is you need it set up in VS Code. And it looks something like this after you set it up, it gets its own little tab. And the only thing that you would do for that is just downloading, it's like a VZX extension. And it's just similar to Chrome and Burp and all this other stuff. It's, it's a file type where you can just load an extension directly. And when you get the license and you get in there, it gives you step-by-step -step instructions for how to download it. And then you can pretty much go from there. It's like this and you can see it over there too, but you go from here and then see this, it says install from V6 or whatever you call this extension. You just click that same, it's literally the same thing as Burp. You pick the file and it loads. And then you'd see this over here, right? So we have a few examples to go through and I will show you kind of what they look like, but we have the uh, Bug Bounty Hunter platform over here. And then we also have just the regular like Dom XSS lab over here because the newer version actually pulls HTML. So that's kind of what this is gonna show. And then the other one, I, I wanna show the actual like just JavaScript stuff and how it pulls it and, and beautifies it and stuff like that. So just by loading this, you see it says 0A29, whatever. So just when we loaded this, this will load, go through burp just like it normally does. And then in burp, since we have the extension, it's actually getting pushed to the JS Weasel uh, server and it's getting processed. And then all we can do is in Visual Studio, we can go here and we see everything we've loaded. Obviously there's a few other like random things here that were loaded along the way. But this 0A2900 was the lab we're doing. And like I said, the newest version, I'm pretty sure it's the newest version only, but actually will pull HTML for you and you can filter that in or out. But with this, you can pull the HTML and it's all written out for you and it actually will pull out under it any JavaScript files that it's loading. Again, these are not like gonna be important for this lab because most of Portswigger labs do just like put it in script tags in the uh, in the lab. But if you go see down here, this is actually gonna be the vulnerable, vulnerable part and we're not gonna solve it because that's not the point of the video, but this is the post message request that you're gonna basically, obviously like you're just doing an inner HTML and e-data here. So this is the exploitable part. But the point is, is that it loads all of it. It puts it in a function that you can see and it's actually in VS code. So you can use all of VS code's functionality. You can find in folder, you can find in file, you can change it. You can do a, whatever you wanna do to like mess with it in here. So that's one example of doing this. The other example we had was with this one, and this one is actually obviously using JavaScript. So when you load this page, a bunch of JavaScript will load with it. And this is just like the blank page. And the whole point is to find vulnerabilities on this platform, right? So when we're on the platform trying to find vulnerabilities, we again see 5.5 BFE. So if I go in here, it's right here. And now obviously you're gonna see a lot more JavaScript loading. So there's some jQuery stuff and JS deliver stuff, stuff we probably don't really care about. But some of this other stuff we do. So like app.js is probably pretty interesting to look at. If it will open. It's loading. There we go. So what will actually work is 
you can see some of the stuff first of all pulled it all and again beautified it all so it's all indented and actually readable but with javascript over here what you can actually see is it actually did some string analysis on it and pulled stuff out of here for you and you can look at it so it actually found like the jquery ajax calls here again this is a much smaller file so it's pretty easy to go through and read by hand but imagine this is like a thousands upon thousands upon thousands lines of javascript you, you do not want to like go through and parse it by hand and again in vs code if you wanted to you could go put like ajax in here and you start going through all the ajax commands like that but this makes it easier because it just finds it for you it finds headers that you may need, like your CSRF token, fetch options, stuff like that. But here, it actually just pulls the whole AJAX request for us, right? So like for instance, an interesting one here, if you are on the platform, I mean, I guess this drops a very small hint, but in this app.js, you see a function called delete post. And all it does is it's an AJAX request that sends a post request with, a, with data being method of delete. And then that's really all it does. So something you know possibly to look in here look into here sorry because if you're looking here there's obviously these are probably the posts it's talking about and if you're deleting posts then the next logical question should be like well i should only be able to delete my own posts right so this doesn't really look like there's a whole bunch going on here um about checking if it's your post or anybody else's post or anything like that so again just by looking at this and parsing through here it's something to keep in mind and it's something that we can check and it pulls all this automatically. Again, there's a premium one here, premium.js. That's why I said it's a premium one. Same thing, it pulls it right out. There's a fetch option here, HTTP request being made here. It saves all these kind of things. Again, it looks for like HTTP requests, secrets, parameters, all that kind of stuff. Um, I use these in this example and they're very small again, so they're not the best examples because you can read it very quickly. It's only like this one's only 40 lines, for example, but again the value comes when you're reading these thousands upon thousands of lines it will do automatic automatically grab source maps for you and load that code it'll automatically ch put chunks together for you and make it readable it'll beautify all that kind of stuff so when you actually get in the weeds of javascript this is very very helpful for you because it does all of that for you and all you end up with is JavaScript that's actually readable and is already parsed for you so you can click around and see the interesting stuff. I would really, really encourage you to look into it. I dropped the link for it below so you can read more about the features, the docs, all that kind of stuff and uh, request a trial if you wanna try it out. Um, also, obviously we had the conversation with Charlie one video before this, go watch that. It was a great conversation. He's on Twitter, he's all around Discord channels and Slack channels, I'm sure he'd love to talk about it. And I'm sure he'd love to answer more questions you may have about it or use cases or this or that or the next thing. Another thing I am gonna link in the description just because it was interesting and came up a while ago is Corbin actually put a tweet out a little while ago about using this with a tool called Cursor, which is basically like an AI empowered VS code from what I understand. I've never used it. But the tweet kind of blew up and it's a very interesting tweet to look at. It basically allows you to like ask AI questions about the code, but it's built on top of VS code. So this VS code extension for JS Weasel works in cursor and you can basically then load JavaScript from stuff you're proxying into cursor and then ask AI questions about it. Like I think the example he uses is like, tell me the post request parameters for this. And it just prints it out for you. And you can just like basically ask questions about the code that you're already parsing. And AI will read that code and answer questions about it using uh, GPT, I think, or Llama. I think are your two options for cursor. But check that out too. I will link that tweet in the description also below the information about the tool. Um, but I'm sure there will be so much more. And again, Charlie talked about features coming. He's consistently working on it. He's consistently making it run better, cleaner, all that kind of stuff. So it's a tool I would look into, uh, watch the talk, check out the tweet and uh, see what you can do with it. I promise it, uh, it won't be a waste of time. Thanks.